All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we have a feast of Brava figs in front of me here today. These are, of course, different varieties, but they are of the Brava crop, which is the first crop of figs that ripens on fig trees. Now, not every variety produces Brava, which is why this is quite exciting. Um, I also have troubles here in the Philadelphia area, typically ripening Brava, but this is a record year for Brava. So I'm really excited to talk about this topic when normally I don't always get the opportunity. So we have a good selection here of different varieties. Um, and I wanna show you guys not only just this tasting that we're gonna do, talk about the flavor profiles, the textures, and the differences between these Bravas, but we're also gonna look at the trees themselves towards the end of this tasting, or I should say after the tasting is over. Now we have, of course, Moro de Caneva here. It's pretty obvious. I know a lot of you guys recognize this one. It's got a long neck, long stem. The Bravas uh, actually have a short stem, but the neck is still very long. And typically that's pretty characteristic of Bravas is a longer neck and the figs are typically larger. We also have a good handful here of Green Michurinska. Uh, Green Michurinska is probably the largest tree I have on the property and it is probably producing more Brabas than any other tree. Uh, we also have Long de Oot, which is the largest Brava here on the table. It has been getting eaten up pretty good though by ants. I don't know how good this one's gonna be, uh, but uh, these figs are massive, usually 150 to 200 grams. This tree though, however, has so many Brabas uh, for the sheer size of the tree that it is the most impressive and the most productive Brava producer. Uh, also for the weight, it's just incredible how many, uh, how much weight this tree can produce of figs. We also have a Brava here of White Triana. And what's interesting about this is that the color of the pulp is actually bleeding through the skin. That's pretty amazing. We have uh, a Neruchula de Elba Brava, a Black Celeste Brava, which is not supposed to ripen. We also have uh, some Verdolino Bravas, of Verdino del Nord Brava. We have, um, uh, what is this one here? Uh, it'll come to me. Oh, this is LSU Huye. We also have White Marseille and then Brianzolo Rosso. Brianzolo Rosso, by the way, is, I t already had a couple Bravas off of this tree. They're incredible. Uh, unlike any other fig I've eaten, not just Bravas, but uh, any other main crop fig I've eaten as well. So again, we're gonna cut these open. I'm gonna taste a few and we'll talk about some of the differences. Uh, Moro de Caneva by far and away is probably as well up there in terms of sheer numbers. I have multiple trees in the ground and they're all typically producing Brabas in high quantity. Um, interestingly enough, one of the younger trees, Fico Seco, not Narino, there are multiple named Moro de Caneva trees, but the Fico Seco is somehow ahead and it's a much smaller tree. We'll look at that. We'll look at the differences between the two. A uh, much younger, less established tree. That looks really, really good. Let's try it. Try to go quick with this. Really nice and figgy, sweet, jammy. A little bit fruity. In my opinion, a very good fig, almost comparable to the main crop. It is um, just a little short of the main crop. These are also of a very good size. It's no wonder to me, this variety is a commercial variety, grown, grown in Caneva, Italy, but grown all throughout Northern Italy as well. Um, it is a very popular fig there, and it really translates well over to the northeastern part of the United States. Short season climates, cold climates. It's actually a fantastic commercial fig. And um, not just, of course, for the main crop, but the Brabas are really such a valuable crop for a lot of people. This fig can be grown almost anywhere, and it's not just valuable for those people where you don't have a long enough season but it's also valuable, I find, monetarily valuable. Um, it is a extremely valuable crop for commercial growers for that reason. So anyway, 
Uh, that's Moro de Caneva or Nerino and Fico Seco. I wonder if there's a difference between the, the two. Let me just open this one up. I believe this is Nerino. They look exactly the same. And honestly, it's so hard to even tell the difference between the two. I, I would never really know. I mean, they are both, they are both Moro de Caneva. If there are any differences, I have not detected them. But exceptional Breva producer. I mean, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, a mild place, this has got to be on top of your list because that you could potentially ripen two crops of figs off of this tree. It's very early to ripen its main crop, and it's also got plentiful Breba. Here's green Michurinska, and it's amazing that a lot of these Brabas are all ripening at once. You know, they ripen about 90 to 120 days after the trees wake up. So you only really need about 120 frost-free days for the Breba crop. And that's what I think makes it so special, allows the fig to be grown in such a wide uh, range of climates. These green Michurinska Brabas, I had one the other day. It was, it was absurdly good. Now, as I was saying, these Brabas, I, I think, um, are all ripening roughly around the same time. Uh, it's kind of strange how that works, but there isn't really, I think, a whole lot of like, oh, this Braba is significantly earlier than the others. All my trees, depending on when they wake up from dormancy, is going to determine essentially when these Brabas are ripening. Again, 90 to 120 days later. Probably a little bit different depending on how warm your spring is. Let's try some of these. Uh, this was absurdly good fig. Yeah. Now, this one's not as thick as the Moro de Caneva. I would say slightly more interesting flavor, but still, you know, more of a sugar fig, a little bit fruity, um, you know, not that crazy in terms of the flavor profile of it. But, you know, it's an exceptionally high quality fruit. So for me, I'm like, it's just really hard to beat. I probably could have let these hang on the tree longer and would have had that same experience I had the other day. Um, yeah, it was the other day, and it was basically drying up on the tree. And that's how you want all your figs. They're definitely gonna express more flavors at that point. All right, let's cut a bunch of these open now at once. That white Triana looks fantastic. Now, as I said before, not every variety is supposed to produce Breba. And so what I've done is I put together a list of varieties that produce Breba. You can go online. Uh, I'll put a link in the description and you can look at the article I've written of different varieties that will produce them. And that way you can uh, be more informed. You can select a variety for yourself that will produce Breba uh, and that way you're not gonna miss out on this really important crop. Now it's not a, just a crop as well for people who, you know, only live in these mild summer or short season climates. This is a, this is a crop of figs for everybody. If you, I lived in California or a really hot and dry place, you bet I will be growing some Breva figs or figs that produce Breva. And the reason for that is they're gonna ripen at least 30 to 45 days earlier than your main crop figs. So it's, a, it's just a no brainer, even in these really hot and dry places, why not have earlier figs if you can, if you can help it? So that's pretty special right there. I mean, look at the colors on some of these. Uh, the Verdina del Nord and Ruchilla de Elva are insane uh, with that pigmentation. Um, all right, same thing with 
Way Triana. All right, we'll do this one by one. Here is uh, Elba. Let's get this camera to focus. So we can get a decent photo. There we go. All right, we'll try this. Um, it's actually quite bitter. The skin on the Ruchilla de Elba is usually quite bitter. And I find that has, the reason for that is that it contrasts very well with the sugariness of the pulp. But if the sugar content isn't very high in the Elba figs, the, the bitterness shines through. This is White Triana. This one's up next. That's, um, that's really good. A jelly fig, different texture than the others. The sweetness is uh, not very high. Here's Black Celeste. This looks like a dried Black Mission fig or something. Like the pigmentation is so insane in this that uh, it doesn't even look real. I can't even believe I ripened one of these. That's about as good as the main crop. Now, I don't expect that to continue ripening Braba, but if it does, I'll, I'll let you guys know, of course. It's already one of my favorite figs. Amazing to think that if it were to start producing Braba, <laughs> uh, what I would then think about it. Here's Verdolino, and also an exceptionally bifera fig. Produces a lot of Braba. I'm not entirely sold on these though. The tree is uh, quite young. Let me try it. Fruity, but definitely lacking in quality, I think, because of the tree watering practices. That one I, I can't really reserve, but I do know, or I cannot really accurately judge it, but I do know it is a good Brava producer of high quality. Here's Verdino del Norte. I mean, this was like dried on the tree. Ants were getting at it. That's exceptional. Best one so far. The only reason for that is because it's the most ripe. But that's what, uh, what makes a good fig. That's usually the best tasting one is the one that's the most ripe and that's why Verdino del Nord is my favorite fig. There's Long de Oot. Now, I've had some Long de Oot Brabas in the past that were just unbelievably good. We did a video on this. This one here, this one's got some problems. The ants have been eating it up. It's not as ripe as I want it to be. Even slightly fermented, I think. Unfortunate. That tree, as I said, is loaded. Here's LSU Huye. Quite a few Brabas on this tree as well. It's pretty consistent. This is quite good. Let's get through the last two here. All right, so on the right is White Marseille on the left is Brianzola Rosso. Now, White Marseille, I think, is a very underrated fig. And some of the Brabas I've had off Brianzola Rosso have been absurd so far because of the texture. We'll talk about it in a minute. Let's try the White Marseille first. This is definitely underripe. But it's still pretty good. Not the greatest. Here's Brian's Oloroso. What I've been finding about this fig is that it really has a creamy texture. Brown sugar. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's so creamy that it's so unlike other varieties. It's so unique in that way. 
I just said so too many times. But yeah, I mean, this was a lot of figs all at once here, and it's hard to differentiate between them. But if I had to rank them, I would say the um, Virgino del Nord was number one. And in there for probably second place is a tie between Brianzolo Rosso, Moro de Caneva, Black Celeste. And then I would put probably Green Michurinska number four. But again, that's just what this is on this given day. We'll do another tasting at a future date. What's important is that this is not, of course, you know, what I think of these figs forever. It's just on this given day. Tomorrow or the next day I pick a whole bunch of them. Uh, there'll be some figs that are more ripe than others and that's probably the fig that well, I will enjoy more than the other ones. So here's um, the smaller Fico Seco or Moro de Caneva tree here. It's mixed in with Little Ruby, which by the way, there might be some Little Ruby Brave on here. I had one the other day. Mm, is this one ripe down here? It is. There's a little bonus. This is exceptional, this Breva. The tree is dwarf. It really has topped out at about four feet with very minimal pruning, if any. Here is the Breva. I bag all the Brevas with these organza bags because I have no choice. The birds will get them all. Typically, I'm going to have a similar focusing problem. There we go. They're smaller figs, but they're very good. These are always really high quality. Uh, sugar figs, figure flavor, very, very good. Uh, has like a date raisin-esque flavor to it. But there's not many this year. There hasn't been many in the past. We had 12 a few years ago. But for some reason, this tree has been rather inconsistent with the Brava crop. And if it was going to produce a lot of Brava, this would have been the year for it. And so we don't really have a whole lot. So I can't really say that this is the most reliable Brava producer. But if you get them, it's a nice bonus and they're very good. Uh, here we go. Here's some of the, as I said, Moro de Caneva Bravos. They're just huge. You know, you see them on the tree and you're thinking to yourself, wow, these are really big, nice sized fruits. Um, mixed in here with the Ronde Bordeaux, the Little Ruby. And for the size of this tree, the amount of Brava I've already harvested from it that we looked at, most of those I think were the Moro de Caneva. Up in here, we have actually some Sultane ripening. This was actually one of the first Bravas to ripen. Spot that there in the bag. We've got some JH Adriatic in those right there. The LSU Huye has got some Bravas, uh, probably about seven or so. These are getting real close, but not there just yet. Rianzolo Rosso, again, really nice producer. get this bag off here. It's a beautiful, beautiful Breva. And I cannot believe how good these are. Again, we just tried it, but let's try this one here that's not as ripe. I, find, I found that these are pretty good even under ripe. Because of that texture. That's really good. Super, super good sweet and the texture is unlike really many other figs I've eaten. So for me, this is like quite underrated. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to more of these. And um, you guys ought to really be happy if you have this tree. I'm also more excited now than ever about the main crop. We'll get to see what the main crop a better idea of the main crop. That's very good. Oh my God. You know, you just never know what you got sometimes. 
takes years for some of these trees to really work themselves out. And Sometimes you might be wondering, is this tree any good? And then one year it turns a corner and it just wows you. I mean, look at some of these more it can ever brave us up there. The clusters of these things. I mean, they're, they're like literally clusters of fruit that are all ripening pretty much at the same time. And I bagged them all. You can't see them. I mean, some of them definitely I could pick right now and I would be happy with the quality, but uh, we're not expecting any rain. It's very warm. I have no doubts that uh, these will continue to ripen. Here's some safrari in here. We got quite a few safrari this year, probably close to 10. Quite a young tree, quite a small tree, and it's, it's got some good production on it for its age and its size. Very, very impressive. And then back in here is the long de oot, but really none of these are ripe just yet. It's quite strange how these are so much further behind the other varieties, but they are like massive. I mean, they are just gigantic. This thing at one point looked like a hand. Here's another one. Just crazy, um, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So very, very productive for the, the size of the tree. Uh, there's a, another one up there that's just becoming massive. And then here's the green Michurinska, which um, we have showed you guys the production of these trees in uh, another video, but I think it, it's easier a spot now that the bags are on there. You could see all the Brabas exactly where they're at. Now this green Michurinska fig, I'm gonna get three crops of figs off of this this year. Uh, here's an example. We've got Brabas down here. On that same branch, we have the new growth, which forms the main crop. Then we did some pinching. And here's the beginning of the third crop of figs, AKA the second crop of main crop, which will ripen probably, it's early July, we'll get those 90 days later, which puts us at uh, August, September, October. They're gonna ripen probably around the middle of October all the way through and past frost. So pretty darn impressive. And we've got some other trees on the other, other side of the yard. We've ripened uh, Teramo, which is an exceptional Braba as well. Highly recommend that one. Seems very plentiful. And we've got some Nerushela de Elba. I've got another Long de Oot, similar variety to Long de Oot. And coming up, we'll probably have as well some Col Noir Brava in a future video. But under here is, I uh, wanted to show you guys the productive Brava crop of Neurochilla de Elba. So uh, there's a lot to choose from. You know, there isn't just necessarily one variety and it's nice that a lot of the, a lot of the varieties that I enjoy <laughs> and do well here uh, surprisingly, they produce a really nice Brava crop. So for me, um, you have to be a little bit patient. That's what I've learned with these Bravas. Plant the trees in the ground. You're going to be much more successful with these planted than you would in pots. Um, that was our big lesson this year. Uh, and you have to choose, of course, the right variety. So. You know, go to my blog if you haven't already. Check out the information I've shared on these Brava figs and what varieties you could choose. Uh, I personally, I think it's really, really hard to beat Verdino del Nord and the Ruccello de Elba. But I also have always said high things about Moro de Caneva. Uh, Green Michurinska is proving to be incredible. Uh, White Marseille is a very underrated fig. Long de Oot in the right climate is probably producing the best, best tasting Brava out of any of these. I really love White Triana. It's just an absolute beast of a fig. 
Vernalino, I know it will uh, at some point shine, and um, yeah, we will have much more success, I think, going forward now that I've kind of realized that, you know what, these Brabas are going to be a lot more productive than I originally expected them to be, especially because I thought it would just be too cold here. I thought our springs were had too much fluctuation in temperatures in the spring, but it's not that. It's just get them in the ground, get them some age, and you're going to get Brabas every year uh, unless you have a really, really nasty cold. But... Uh, I think in my future is what I'm trying to say is that this is a lot more likely and consistent. So thanks for watching here, guys. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we'll see you for the next video on the Bravas. We're going to do another one. All right, take care.